and a ver it's lovely to join you in your homes for this online worship from St. Clement's Church in Poole. This is the 20th Sunday after Trinity, Sunday the 17th of October. So let's begin. Come, now is the time to worship. Let us worship the Lord. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us bow down in worship. So let us sing for joy to the Lord. Our first piece of music this morning. All who are thirsty all who are we come to the fountain dip your heart in the stream of life let the pain and the sorrow be washed away and in the waves of his mercy as deep cries out we say So we come to our time when we say sorry to God. When I say, Father in Jesus, would you respond, forgive us our sin. Father God, we come before you today remembering the times that we have been angry with others because our frustration that things haven't gone the way that we wished. Father, in Jesus, forgive us our sin. Father, there are times when we've blamed other people for the things that have happened. We've pointed the finger when the fault did not belong where we were pointing. We were not willing to accept our part in the problem. Father, in Jesus, forgive us our sin. Father, there are times when we've 
held on to things, kept them close, where we've been greedy and selfish. Father, in Jesus, forgive us our sin. Father, there have been times when we've looked the other way and chosen not to look at what you are pointing us to and to do something about it. Father, in Jesus, forgive us our sin. And there are times, Lord, when we've chosen not to hear the cries of the needy, the cries of the hungry, or your small voice whispering to us, guiding us in the way that you wanted us to go. Father, in Jesus, forgive us our sin. We know, Lord, that when we reach out to you, your forgiveness is immediate and total. We thank you. We thank you that you gave your son Jesus to pay the price for our sin. Amen. And a prayer shared around the world with Christians. The collect for this 20th Sunday after Trinity. God, our light and salvation, illuminate our lives, that we may see your goodness in the land of the living, and looking on your beauty, may be changed into the likeness of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
reading from the epistle this morning comes from the book of Hebrews chapter 5 beginning to read at the first verse every high priest is selected from among the people and is appointed to represent the people in matters related to God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins he is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray since he himself is subject to weakness. This is why he has to suffer, offer sacrifices for his own sins, as well as for the sins of other people. And no one takes this honour on himself, but he receives it when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, Christ did not take on himself the glory of becoming a high priest, but God said to him, you are my son. Today I have become your father. And he says in another place, You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading today comes from Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, beginning to read at verse 35. The Request of James and John Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. And they replied, Let one of us sit at your right hand and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you're asking, Jesus replied. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will drink the cup I drink and be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, 
and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Then they came to Jericho. Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city. And a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebu rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up, on your feet, he's calling you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, hello again. When drying up the dishes, I sometimes have a little daydream. Our teapot, with a little imagination, well, quite a lot of imagination really, reminds me of Aladdin's magic lamp. And so as I dry it with the tea towel, I think, genie of the teapot, come and grant me my wishes. Well, I get disappointed every time. It is, after all, just an ordinary teapot. And anyway, I really don't know what I might wish for. But I thought of that daydream when looking at our Bible reading today from Mark chapter 10. It started off with the two brothers, James and John, coming to Jesus with a very special request. Now, they had obviously planned this, waiting for the opportunity to speak to Jesus alone when all the other disciples were out of earshot. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. Notice the extent of that request. Whatever we ask. James and John were clearly thinking big. Now, there are many different paths to the good life. Some people, for example, decide to get there by honest means, earning the good life by hard work and determination. They don't want or ask for God's help. And if the fame, the wealth or the power comes their way, they can boast that they did it all themselves. Others perhaps just hope for the best, and some maybe buy a lottery ticket each week. But not James and John. They wanted a shortcut, a religious shortcut, from being just two of the twelve disciples following around after Jesus, to be at the very top of the heap. Their vision was for the time when Jesus became king and was seated on the throne. They wanted to be there with him, seated on the thrones on either side of him. So yes, they were thinking big. They didn't want lots of money or a palace to live in. Well, not then anyway. They really wanted to share the honour and glory of being enthroned with Jesus. 
it's a bit like, say, Lynn and Mo deciding that St Clement's Church is just too small for them and phoning the Archbishop of Canterbury to tell him that they'll be on the next train to London to help him run the Church of England. I think I can guess what the answer would be. But that's a very worldly way of thinking, and so was the thinking of James and John. They had been with Jesus for many months. They had seen him perform some amazing miracles, healing the sick, raising the dead, even feeding 5,000 or more people at one time. And having listened to him teaching, they were convinced that Jesus truly was the long-promised Saviour, the Christ. And yet, they had failed to understand nearly all that Jesus had been teaching. Their minds were stuck in the picture of the Christ that the Jews had imagined. He was, they thought, to be a worldly king, in the same mould as King David from hundreds of years before. A warrior king who would defeat all the enemies of Israel and establish a new kingdom. And they, James and John, would be right there with Jesus at his side. And maybe even James and John were thinking that they deserved such a reward. They had, after all, been helping Jesus all this time and deserved some recognition for their efforts. Well, it's fair to say, I think, that they were verging on idolatry. And though they weren't worshipping stone statues, idolatry is much wider than that. Idolatry is worshipping something besides God. It is the process of replacing God with what we really want. And taken to its limit, we can even manage to ask God to help us worship our idols. Well, James and John, they went for the big picture by asking for whatever we want. Our requests may be more restrained and specific, such as, Oh God, I'll promise to be really good and I'll come to church every week if you'll get me to pass the exam or get me a better job or get me a pay rise. You know, I'm sure we can all identify with James and John in their request. I suspect, deep down, we all have thoughts a bit like that from time to time. Wouldn't it be great if God would do whatever I asked him to do? Selfishness is very deep-rooted in all of us. And as Mark makes clear, James and John were not alone in having grand ideas for when Jesus became king. In verse 41, Mark says, When the ten, that's the, the other disciples, heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. The other disciples were indignant. They were angry and jealous. They were upset that they hadn't had the good idea first to ask Jesus about sitting in glory with him. So how does Jesus respond to his selfish disciples? Does he say, because you've asked for so much, I'm not going to give you anything? Or, well, you've pushed too hard this time. You're no longer my disciples. No, not at all. Instead, he makes reference to his upcoming crucifixion. In verse 39, Jesus said to them, Can you drink the cup I drink, or be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with? These are veiled references to his suffering and death. The disciples didn't fully understand what he was talking about at the time, but we can understand now. Jesus was saying, in effect, I'm not going to be a king as you imagine. I'm not going to be super wealthy. I'm not even planning to be popular. I am not who you think I am. 
I am going to give my life on a cross to pay for the sins of the world. In verse 45, Jesus sums this up with what one might call his mission statement. He said, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. I'll read that again. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Compare that with Jesus' closest friends, the twelve disciples. Despite having been close to Jesus, they were, at this time anyway, far from being the saints we might imagine them to be. They were power-hungry, looking to use Jesus to get what they wanted. And Jesus responds by saying, I don't want your service, I want to serve you. So we have these two very different views. The disciples, all out selfishness, and Jesus, all out selfless service. The disciples were saying, give us whatever we want. And Jesus was saying, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So what about us? Do we come to God with our shopping list of prayers, telling him our wants and our needs? Well, if so, Jesus says to us, I love you more than that. These things you want, I made them, I can give them to you, if that's the right thing to do. But you need more. You need much more. You need salvation. You need rescuing from the evils of this world. You need someone to die for your sins. You need someone to die for your selfishness and your idolatry. Once we can accept that God calls for us to come to Jesus in faith, we will be changed. We are called to be changed by God's love. And then, and only then, will our hearts be changed that we might imitate Jesus, that we might become joyful and glad to serve others. Our world is ruled by people who lord their authority over others, by people like us. But imagine a world where people use their authority to serve like Jesus. What if everyone at St Clement's was eager to serve? And what if our service was self-forgetful? That is, where we didn't keep track of ours or anyone else's service. What if any hint of selfishness was always met with sacrificial love? What if we brought this attitude into our jobs and our families and our neighbourhood? The dream of God's kingdom is simply amazing, a community where people are soaked in the love of God <coughs> and are active in loving and serving others. So today, meet Jesus, bring yourself to him and let his love overwhelm your life and no longer seek to be served but look to serve others. What a beautiful vision. What a loving God. May Jesus change our lives. Amen. Thank you, John, for those challenging words. We come now to our affirmation of faith, our creed. So I'm going to ask you some questions. And the response, if you wish to say it, is we believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, 
source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist. We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life and power to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen.
we come now to our time of prayer together. And when I say, into your hands, O Lord, would you respond, we commit our prayers. Into your hands, O Lord, we commit our prayers. In humility and love, let us pray together to the God of our making and of our redeeming. We pray this morning that all Christians may fulfill their vocation to be servants, caring for the needs of others, obedient to their Lord in all things and supportive of one another in worship, in prayer and in deepening faith. Into your hands, O Lord, we commit our prayers. God our Father, we pray for all those who govern, all those who advise. May they seek out your will for the good of all in each crisis, in each dilemma, in each debate. Into your hands, O Lord, we commit our prayers. Father, we pray that we may develop the habit of rejoicing in the opportunities to serve and to put out, putting ourselves out for others. Lay down our craving for praise and for importance. Into your hands, Lord, we commit our prayers. We lift to you the many that we know who are suffering in body, in mind and in spirit. May each one sense Christ close beside them, knowing his healing and resting in his love. Into your hands, O Lord, we commit our prayers. And we lift to you now all those who have died in faith, that they might be welcomed into the light of heaven, and that all who are walking in sin today may turn away from evil and live fully. Into your hands, O Lord, we commit our prayers. We thank you, Lord God, for your long-suffering patience with us and for the affectionate forgiveness which lifts us to our feet every time we stumble. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we share now in the prayer which Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So we come, as we come towards the end of our service, let's sing again.
Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Play, Spirit, plays. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Lord, I come to your awesome presence from the shadows into your radiance. By the blood I may enter your brightness. Search me, try me. Consume all my darkness, shine on me, shine on me, shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory. Faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. Mirrored here, may our lives tell your story. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. And a final blessing as we go out from this place today. May the Lord bless you, keep you, make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May he look with joy upon you and bring you his peace. The blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and all those that you love today and always. Amen. Uh.